Hey there all YouTubers, today I'm going to do a full book reading of Wilbert the Forest Engine by Christopher Audrey. One day, this is about the time when Wilbert, an engine who worked in Gloucestershire on the Dean Forest Railway, came to the island of Sodor to help out. There were some mishaps but, well, how about I tell you it all from the beginning. We're going to start with the story... Percy's Porridge Donald and Douglas were rushed off their wheels. The fat controller came to see them. I know you don't mind hard work, he said, but you can't be everywhere at once. You need some help on the branch lines. The, the Scottish twins were grateful. I have a plan, the fat controller told them. He went to see a friend who lived in Gloucestershire and explained the problem. Then his friend took him to meet Wilbert, a smart blue saddle tank engine with six wheels. Your owner says you can come and help me for a while, the fat controller told Wilbert. Would you like that? Wilbert was delighted. Oh yes please, he said eagerly. His line in the forest of Dean was short and he was delighted for the chance to exercise his wheels. If you are, if you are as good as I think you will be, the fat controller went on. I know where I can get another engine like you, and then you will be able to go back home. Percy was excited when he heard the news. Another cell tank, sir, he said. Is he like me, sir? The fat controller laughed. Oh, he's bigger and stronger than you, Percy, he said. Besides, you can manage your trucks. I want him to help Duck, so I'm afraid you may not even meet him. During the week before Wilbert came, it was cold and wet. The engines thought it would never stop raining. None of them wanted to go out, but passengers and trucks were waiting. It's just the sort of weather when you need porridge for breakfast, laughed Percy's driver. What's porridge? asked Percy. It's a, well, difficult to describe, admitted the fireman. You boil oatmeal and water. Which makes a sort of sticky soup, finished the driver. Then you add milk and sugar. It's delicious. At the station by the river, sacks were being stacked on the platform. The men who had filled them had worked fast and they had not tied the sacks properly. As the porter lifted the last sack, the signalman dropped, um, dropped with a clang. Better hurry, here's Percy, the porter said. And he swung the heavy sack onto the pile, knocking the top one over. <gasps> No, I'm not. I was off in the middle of a video. The oatmeal inside the sacks burst all out, covering everything. The rest of that pasta. Yeah, I am. The pouring rain quickly turned into a sort of a sticky soup. And at that moment, Percy appeared. Percy wasn't going fast, but he couldn't prevent himself from ploughing into the porridge, which now covered the rails. Ugh! He exclaimed and stopped. Porridge dripped from Percy's wheels, rods and ribs. He felt awful, wet, sticky and cold. His driver and fireman got down to inspect the mess. Oh dear, remarked the driver. Well, Percy, you found out about porridge the hard way, haven't you? The thing is, you're supposed to eat it, not paddle in it. <laughs> Percy didn't think it was funny. The fat controller wasn't amused either. He telephoned the junction, where they were just in time to stop Wilbert on his way to Duck's branch line. He came across Thomas's line instead, and soon reached the shed at the top station, and Percy cheered up at once. <laughs> I wanted to meet you, he said, but I didn't think it would be this way. Porridge is alright for breakfast, my driver says, but it makes a mess of an engine who isn't expecting it. 